I, I already, I already continue our, our fight for the full of justice as part of the aviary family. I am. I want to help sweet baby swan, but I don't know if they're going to let us be involved in their case. I also feel like there's potential that we, there was like evidence we could have gotten that could have saved her, but kind of sucks. All right, let's do it. Boop. Do I remember the July Revolution? Of course. How could I ever forget the chanting, the violence, the smell of gunpowder, the three glorious days? God, the art in this game is so good. Act three, the sleeping city. I can't believe he's skipping work again. I swear, if I find that moping bird brain at Le Canard Joyeuse. Oh, finally, good morning, Falcon. Morning, spare. No, wait, it's two in the afternoon. That means the official greeting is, where the hell have you been, you lazy bones? Oh, she's far too early for this level of roasting. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon. No way! We've got important business to discuss. I can't do that when you're half drunk. Oh, mon dieu, give me a break. I haven't had a good night's sleep since the trial. Something on your mind? Yes, just what that wolf judge said about a revolution. Oh, that guy was off his rocker. And besides... If we worried about every potential French Revolution, we would never get any work done. Am I right? Yes, maybe you're right. Worrying doesn't do us any good. Tell me about the important business you want to discuss. Oh? Oh! Yes! The business. A letter. This one's from the Paris Police Department. Fancy wax seal and everything. Oh, that is a fancy wax seal. Well, go ahead, Sparrowson. You may have the honors. All right, ahem. Monsieur Falcon, meet me on the rooftop cafe opposite the Place de la Bastille. I have a proposal. Regards, Inspector Valerti. Oh, well, that's it. How terse. Valerti's letter has been added to your evidence folder. A proposal from the inspector. Interesting. Do you have any idea what proposal he has in mind? Not a clue. So... Um, are we going to go and meet him and find out? Do it. I don't know what sort of proposal the inspector has in mind, but we would be foolish to reject it without even hearing him out. Grab your coat. All right, no dilly-dallying. I like it. Oh, but before I forget, I need to drop by the hospital at some point. What did you eat this time? No, 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 it's not like that. Well, not entirely. I need to pay for my bill from the last visit. Oh, that's reasonable. Sure, we can pay a visit, but the inspector's call should take priority, I think. A new day. Wait, where is this? That's the offices. Hmm. Oh, it's way up there. Ah, oh, got it. Burr! It's far too cold to be meeting on a rooftop cafe. Why couldn't the inspector have chosen a comfier location? Who knows? Maybe the inspector likes the view because it reminds him of his days guarding the old Bastille under the Ancien Regime. Wait, you think the inspector worked here during the Ancien Regime? Do you think that's how he got his war wounds? was a joke, Sparrows, and I'm pretty sure the inspector isn't that old. 
What a liar! Well, well, well. Severin, what are you doing here? Settle down, JJ. Just like you, I was invited here by the inspector. What could he want with all three of us? It's hardly unusual for the lawyers and the police of France to collaborate. The inspector probably has a big investigative role that requires all hands on deck. A big investigative role? That sounds so juicy! By the by, did you hear what happened to Judge Romulus? No, what? Turns out he acquired his position as judge through illegal means. So a warrant has been put out for his arrest. He's a wanted- He acquired his position through illegal means? What does that even mean? <clears throat> well, I'm a little hazy on the details. Something about pushing another judge into the sin. Ramiha 3, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate it. I can believe that. Anyway, I'm sure he'll be caught before long. Nobody manages to escape the long arm of the law. Speaking of which... Arr, good. You're all here. Um, excuse me, Monsieur, uh, Mr. Inspector Valerity, sir. Falcon and I were wondering, did you get your injuries while defending the old Bastille prison? <sighs> Don't drag me into this, you fool. I was joking. Are ya impudent whelps? I'm not that old. I sustained these injuries in the July Revolution, 18 years ago. I was a royal guard, a lowly peon. The air was thick with gunpowder and blood. Oh, great. Now you've set him off. We were given the order to charge at a rebel barricade. My comrades and I fastened our bayonets. Suddenly, boom! Without warning, a gunpowder keg exploded and my comrades were dead. I was heavily wounded. That's when I looked up and saw a looming figure standing between the gargoyles of Notre Dame. It was the Viridian Killer himself. Ahem. <clears throat> this is a fascinating story, Inspector, but perhaps you could tell us why we are here? Oh, right, of course. Why we're here. Well, what I'm about to tell you is to remain strictly confidential, you understand? <coughs> <coughs> ah! Ah! Whew! Ah! <clears throat> it's a matter of national security. As you've probably heard, France is under a threat from a certain heinous group. Revolutionaries? Uh-huh. Revolutionaries. Indeed. Rebels. There's a storm brewing in the shadows of Paris. We, the Paris Police Department, have known about it for months, no years. In every tavern, on every street corner, people talk of organizing protests and overthrowing the government. The king has ordered for public gatherings to be dispersed, newspapers to be censored, the whispers of dissent remain. No surprise there, if you take away an angry citizen's ability to speak, they will just get angrier. Indeed, and that's why it's paramount we find and strike at the heart of the rebel group as soon as possible. For that, I need your help. What exactly do you want us to do? Interview citizens, scout locations, find the secret rebel meeting location that has escaped the eyes of the police. Do we have any leads? Just one. We know the rebels are having weapons supplied to them by a crooked merchant, referred to as the Croak Monsieur. Oh, like the sandwich. What? Croque Monsieur, it's a hot sandwich. Cheese, ham, a little bechamel. Throw on some peppers if it's a Friday night. Arr, that has nothing to do with sandwiches. Croque Monsieur is the alias of an accomplished, notoriously dangerous arms dealer. In any case, that's everything the Parisian police know. That's everything. That's all you have to demonstrate after years of tracking. Naturally, as a public prosecutor, it is my duty to help the police with their investigative work. I would be honored to lend any and all assistance. Suck up. Arr, that's very good to hear, Monsieur Cocorico. What about you, Falcon? Nigazian, thank you for your becoming a Pareto. We appreciate ya. Well, to be honest, Inspector, I don't quite understand why you're asking me. I'm a private defense attorney. I work for citizens who get stuck in legal trouble. Rebel hunting isn't quite my forte. You want to know why I'm asking you? Look around, Falcon. We're surrounded by corruption and incompetence. The judges are bloodthirsty wolves. The jailers are thieving ravens. The National Guard are sitting ducks. Look at the slackers and dullards who supposedly protect and serve this country. Nobody cares about justice anymore. 
You saw my shameful display at the previous trials. Those are the results I produce with imbeciles to assist me. But you three, you care. Falcon, I saw you defend Dame Catraline and Prince Juan. I heard of your escapades around the city, frantically collecting evidence and interviewing witnesses. Frankly, you did more investigative work over the last month than I've seen any policeman do in a year. Not including myself, of course. But Dame Catiline... It doesn't matter. You have passion. You have conviction. You aren't a total bird brain. By my book, that makes you a fantastic investigator, even if that's not in your job description. What do you say? You want to sit around your office twiddling your thumbs until another pointless job offer falls in your lap? Or do you want to take this opportunity to do something great? Help us track down the animals who wish to harm our glorious nation. Alright. Lame it style, let's do this. I would be honored to help my country, Inspector. Consider us on board. Excellent, just what I wanted to hear. I had no idea you were such a patriot, JJ. Well, there's nothing wrong with a little national pride. Oh yes, pride is fine and all, but um, do we get any compensation for this? Of course, 50 francs. You'll receive another 50 upon the completion of your work. 50 francs? Psh, you're being undersold. Ah, Sperrison, it's a great opportunity. I don't want to keep you any longer than necessary. You already have all the key facts of the investigation. Find the elusive croak, monsieur. Find where the rebels are congregating. Those are your two tasks. I'll check up on your progress in three weeks' time. See what you can accomplish by then. I'll be doing my own independent investigation into the rebel group, JJ, so I suppose this is a competition of sorts. Try to keep up. Oh, don't make me laugh, Severin. I'll have all the rebel leaders behind bars before you even have your first suspect. Come, Sparrison, we have a crook monsieur to hunt. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I knew a little competition would kick those bird brains into gear. Well, Inspector, this has been a productive meeting. I should probably start my investigation into the Croque Monsieur, too. Not so fast, Cocorico. There's something else we need to discuss. <gasps> what? Hmm. Aw, oh, man, it's gonna take a full day to go to all these places. Um, okay, let's go here and see if anybody's talking about it. No! No drinking! Bad Falcon! Calm down, Sparrison. I'm just here for information. Taverns are the first place people go to moan about the government, therefore they are perfect rebel breeding grounds. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, it's you two! What will it be today? Wine or beer? I'm afraid it's just questions for now, Madame Carnell. We're looking for a man called Croc Monsieur. Have you seen him? Hmm, no, that name doesn't sound familiar at all. Alright, well, have you heard of any of your patrons badmouthing the government? Of course, it's a tavern. People couldn't come here to grope and talk politics, which else would they do? That's true. Has anyone stood out? Well, hmm, hmm. Just between you and me, the pair on the drinking floor have been acting very shifty. Now, I'm not saying they're bad, or that they are, aren't rebels, but they're doing far too much talking and not enough drinking, if you know what I'm saying. I think I do. Thank you, madam. Let's see, where to go? The drinking moon. Moon? The drinking... Room? Is what I'm looking for? Oh no, I don't remember these guys' voices. Well. <clears throat> and that's when the Madame was hell told me to put the order in. He's a rebel bot, obviously. No idea where she's going to keep them, though. Piero, you know that she hates being called Mademoiselle. You're going to get stuck with guard duty again. Right, you are the Madame, it is then. Bah? Wait. She ain't married, is she? Why do we have to call her madam? What? Why don't you ask her yourself? No way. She would straight up eat me alive if I asked that directly. What? Wait, 
Shh, shh. Do you smell that? It smells like eavesdroppers. Can I help you, messieurs? Mm. So have you heard of a man called Falcon Wait? There's a slight chance these guys might be rebels. If we ask directly, they might be scared off. Good point. I will try to keep it subtle. <laughs> Tell me everything. Uh, oops. I'm sorry. Uh, where did you get that rifle? Where did you get that swanky hat? Let's go for hat. Mr. what did you get that swanky hat? Huh? Th this old thing? It's just a regular cap that I bought from... Oh man, somebody finally noticed. Me awesome at. I waited years for someone to notice it. Bop! Look at this thing. Who's a pretty Polly? Bop! I'm the prettiest Polly. Bop! Anyway, I bought it from a mademoiselle in Lehal. I think the shop was called Ruse Odds and Ends or something. Fantastic. Thank you, monsieur. Nice, Falcon. Now you can buy a swinky hat, too. But we're no closer to uncovering the mystery of the crop, monsieur. Oh, right. Monsieur, I see you are carrying a rifle. Evidently. Who manufactured it? Oh, good question. See, most hunters around here are carrying old French Charlevilles, but this beauty has something special. See, it's American from the Springfield Armory, model 1812, percussion lock firing mechanism. An American musket, you say? That's certainly quite special. Must have been very hard to procure. It's true you can't buy guns of this quality from standard street sellers, but if you know the right people... Please go on. Well... Okay, <clears throat> listen carefully. You didn't hear it from me, but to meet the crook, monsieur. Actually, it would be foolish for me to explain in public. It would be much easier if you just take this. The Book of Judges? What is this? Some sort of a law book? The book subject is not important. Just take it. Oh, I see. It's THE Book of Judges. Like from the Bible. Old Testament stories of God smiting people and things. <coughs> I appreciate the gift, monsieur, but I am not religious. Nor am I. Then why are you... <sighs> Just take it, you idiot. Walk! Bible books are what we use to pass around code phrases, huh? No oh, code phrases? Piero, please, I'm trying to be low-key, and I can't do that if you're mouthing off with that big beak of yours. Or Oh, right you are. Try to forget what my friend said. Just, um, a little searching for the contents of that good book. You should be able to get what you desire. Is, is that a religious metaphor? No, I'm being very literal. Book of Judges added to the evidence. Well, thank you very much for the gift, monsieur. But to be honest, I have no idea how this is supposed to lead me to our gun salesman. Oh, I see. Well, I hear that there's an excellent friar who performs Bible readings at Notre Dame Cathedral. Perhaps if you show the man your new book, he will be able to find you a particularly spiritual passage. Are you sure that this isn't at all a religious metaphor? I feel like you're trying to convert me. I assure you, I am as secular as they come, monsieur. The friar in Notre Dame Cathedral. Thank you, monsieur. I will make note. Was there something else you wanted? What were you two just talking about before we rudely interrupted? Hmm. Well... I would like to include you in our conversation, but to be perfectly honest, I don't think that's any of your business. Uh. It is our business. We want to join the rebels. I don't think that- I don't know that they're talking about being rebels? I feel like that's gonna- I suppose it isn't our business. I apologize for asking, monsieur. Quite alright, no harm done. Thank you for your assistance. Get out of here. You two seem like decent fellows. You shouldn't get involved in this rebellion business. Just do whatever you need to do with the crook, monsieur, and get out of Paris. That's what a smart person would do. I appreciate your advice, monsieur. Hmm. Uh... 
Are we ready to hit the road? Yeah, pretty sure. Yes, let's make a move. It's the next day. Mmm. Mmm. So many fucking places to go. Um. Notre Dame. Hospital renowned for its progressive attitudes toward medical care. He's supposed to pay his bill. But we haven't done it yet. Mmm. Go to Notre Dame, I guess. Falcon and Sparrow send step into the grand atrium of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Can I look at this? There's an old story. Collection of stories from the Bible's Old Testament given to you. Okay, I can't. I can't read it. Okay, cool. Uh, yes. Scaffolding lines much of the crumbling outer wall, unperturbed. A handful of devotees are silently kneeled in thought. Here yeah, for a little prayer, are we, Falcon? I had no idea you were the religious type. Don't be silly. I'm following up on Fontaine's lead. We must find our mystery friar. Do you think that that's, that that hunched fellow over there? I bet it's him. He looks super suspicious. Oh, it could be, but let's show some tact. <sighs> Excuse me, Monsieur Friar! Do you know what tact is, Ferrison? Uh... It's the same. It's what? It's the judge who's on the run and he's a secret friar? Question? Welcome, my brothers. Welcome. All are welcome under the roof of the house of God. Are you here to confess? Maybe you want to join our services? Actually, friar, we are here because... Falcon! That... that friar, he looks eerily familiar. Now that you mention it, he does look a little like a guy who delivers our post, doesn't he? What? No, that's not who I meant. How does he look anything like our postman? Am I going mad? Your friend appears upset. Oh, don't mind him. He's just in a huff because he thinks you look like this judge we once met. Judge Romulus? Oh, I get that all the time. I'm his twin brother, you see. Oh, good. I'm not going mad. Friar, would you say that you had a good relationship with Romulus? We were close. As you may have already gotten a little bit of trouble with the law. I haven't seen him in weeks. I see. I didn't mean to pry. Oh, it's no trouble. Tell me, why are you here, my brothers? Oh, right. Well, we have a couple of questions, actually. What's with the scaffolding? Friar, we have something we would like to show you. Boop. Could you take a look at this? We heard you could give, um, some special passage readings. Oh, I see. You got your own copy of the Book of Judges. I think you'll find chapter 15, verse 2 to be particularly enlightening. Let's see. Chapter 15, verse 2. This chapter follows the journey of Samson, the heroic judge with divine strength. In this part of the scripture, Samson is confronted by the men who are angered by Samson's notion of justice. Could you read the passage? Okay, um... <clears throat> Three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Edom. They said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And Samson said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they did unto me, so I have done unto them. A beautiful sentence, wouldn't you agree? Yes, totally. It's poetic, a beautiful summation of justice. You understand the passage that is delightful to hear. Yes, Samson was a great judge. Not a judge of today who sits on a high chair and files paperwork. An old judge. A holy judge. A Shafet. Shafets were to be admired and feared. They made their own judgments and dispensed their own punishments. I'm starting to ramble. All right, let's get back to the point. Keyword of the day is Edom. That's the name of the cave where Samson hid. The Rock of Edom. Edom. I got it. I will make a note. Oh, it's like backwards mate. But I'm confused. What do we do with this key word? That's for you to learn on your own, my brothers. You appear to be intelligent. I'm sure if you put your faith in the right people, you'll uncover the truth. I'll see what we can do. 
there anything else I can help you with? Perhaps you wish to make a confession? What's with all the scaffolding, buddy? What's with all the scaffolding? Some sort of construction work going on. Yep, that's right, a little repair, a little renovation. It's no secret the cathedral has seen better days. Cult of Reason did a lot of damage back in the days of the revolution. Now we're well on our way to restoring this holy place to its former glory. Oh, the Cult of Reason. The religion of Christianity. Hey, Falcon, what's the difference between a religion and a cult? Don't be rude, Spinnerson. Don't worry, my brother, I understand how it is. To a young person, all ideologies look like gobbledygook in different packaging, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Maybe you'll come to learn the differences as you grow up. I promise, some ideologies are worth following to the end. Let's not talk anymore about cults and ideologies. Did you want anything else? No, I think we're done here. Thank you for your time, Friar. Go in peace, my brothers. Okay, so obviously that's a password, right? But where do we need to go?